Hey guys, it's Thomas here again. I posted a video of uh, a tour of my drum set a year ago. A lot of you guys wanted to know more about my current setup. And this is it. This is the um, uh, DW Collector Series Maple Mahogany uh, kit that I'm using right now. The one I used last year was a maple kit. This is a maple mahogany kit. I like to play 24 inch bass drums. This is, these are 24 by 14, so check out how shallow these shells are. They're really shallow and I like that. They're very fast. The closer the heads are together, the, the faster the air can move uh, between the two membranes and re-stimulate the membranes. It's uh, very important, particularly on tom-toms, because that's why they call them fast sizes, because the air bounces back between the two membranes very quickly and uh, stimulates both uh, heads very evenly. You get a nice sustain, really beautiful sort of organic, very even uh, sound. And I love it on the kick drums. Uh, it also makes them a lot lighter because there's less less weight on the drum if they're smaller like that. I get the great, you know, big diameter but really nice shallow sizes. Uh, I use a 14 by 6.5 um, edge snare drum. Beautiful drum. If I take my stick bag off, I'll show you. I always keep my stick bag in the middle, by the way, because that way I can access it with both hands. You know, if your lift stick breaks and you have to reach over here, you know, for your stick bag, it's very uncomfortable and silly. So you can see here, there's um, a plug for my internal me miking system here that comes straight out of the snare drum, but of course I also use a Audix i5 on the top. And I use these Vic Firth marching bags because I really only need a few pairs of sticks, maybe, you know, eight or so for a show maximum. So I don't need to have the whole giant freaking bulky heavy stick bag sitting here. I usually have it somewhere behind me. Uh, all I need is a small bag of the sticks that I actually use for the gig. Uh, I find also that the giant large stick bag kind of muffles the tom-toms. If you hang it on the tom-tom, it really chokes the sound of the drum. It really kind of blocks the sound. It makes the drum sit the sound completely out of balance. So I don't like the giant stick bags on my right by the floor tom. This is a nice little melodic array of rata toms. This is a, a 12 inch a depth, 14, 16 and 18. And uh, all 6 inches in diameter. I use two 24 by 14 bass drums. Um, I'm going to let you hear the drums now. I'm going to start with the rata toms. Very unusual, very percussive sounds. And all the drums I'm using smooth white emperor drum heads. These are not mylar drum heads, they're melonix. It's a different material, it's a different film. Um, but they're two ply, uh, Remo, Emperor smooth white heads. They're kind of um, they're not as open maybe as a as a mylar head like as a like a clear um, emperor. They have a certain amount of muffling um, because it's a different film. Very easily tuned uh, and very very um, kind of um, what's the word focused sounding. Okay, so. the very open and uh, they're the last forever uh, they're fantastic hits so this is a 10 by 4 
What are those little things on your snare drum and floor tom there? Those things? Yeah, what are those? These are uh, dampeners, drum head dampeners, and they are by far, I find, the best ones around. Uh, they're called drum tacks. Hmm. They are foam um, discs with an adhesive on the bottom that muffle the drum head just right. You can cut them in half if you want, not as much muffling. Um, Does it stick only once or can you no, use no, them? No, they're totally recyclable. Uh, you can use these for years actually. When you pull the drum tack off after you use it, if you change heads for example, all you need to do is clean the bottom with any alcohol based solvent, anything. It could be Listerine or a vodka and it reactivates the glue um, of the tack and it'll stick forever again. So totally recyclable, super clean. Super we green. <laughs> super green in, in fact. Clean and green <laughs> drum tacks. No, seriously. Uh, I love these things. And they look neat too. They don't look like a freaking green booger on, on your, a blue booger or something on your drum kit. Yeah. Uh, they don't collect all that nasty you know, sawdust and stick dust and whatever. Drum tacks. Okay, check them out. And I use three of my snares because this one I want pretty dead at the moment. For the song I just tracked, I needed a really sort of dry, very kind of controlled sound. So um, I use three on the snare drum. I have one on my 60-inch uh, floor tone. Just enough dampening that I need, and I have two on the 18. Have you ever put them on uh, cymbals? Like if you're put yeah, you can use them on uh, any kind of uh, percussion or drum instrument. You can. I have used them actually a bunch of times on the underside of my right cymbal when I want a more controlled right cymbal sound. That's what I was less, thinking. Less wash, less ring. Just stick one on the bottom, and obviously depending on how close to the uh, stand you mount, you get more or less muffling. The closer to the edge, the more muffling you get. So, and they stick on the underside of the cymbal, which is fantastic. You know, uh, all, all that. You know, most of those gel-based products come off, you know, if you stick them on the bottom of a cymbal and you hit the cymbal, they just fly off, you know, yeah. like a booger that just drives in the cymbal. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it worked well for a cowbell too, actually. They do indeed, in fact, yes. I have another, not this one, but um, another cowbell. I have two on the inside, uh, and it gives the perfect amount of muffling. Uh, you can use them on anything, on drum heads, on cymbals, cymbal undersides cowbells, on a cajon I used it before, you can even use it on uh, acoustic instruments like guitars. If you want less uh, ring of your body, just stick one of those drum tacks on it. It, it. it kills all the unwanted overtones and helps with feedback and so on. Here's a pack, check it out, they look like this. Drum tacks. Below the belt, this is what's going on down here, I have a right and a left kick drum. These are two 24 inch kick drums. Two kick drums, then I have two hi hats here. I've done this for, for probably close to 20 years or so. Um, two kick drums and two hi hats on the outside of that. I like to use hi hat stands and not the remote hats or the, um, the cable hats. Right there. And it's mounted on the hoop of the bass drum with one of those DW hoop clamps here. Very, very uh, efficient. Um, my left hi hat is in fact mounted to the rack. And it's very easy to set up this way. This is a really tiny little rack. It's very portable and it holds a lot of stuff. I mean, this whole left side of my drum kit is mounted on this mini rack here. I call them stealth racks because they're so stealthy. You don't really see the whole rack construction and I hate it when you see a lot of rack when you set up your drums. I want to see the drums, not so much the hardware. Um, so I use these sort of stealthy looking racks, stealth racks.
Uh, here I have a Mino Crasher. Here I have a Remo TSS drum. And, um, and on the same rack I have also mounted these uh, four Rotatoms, the hi-hat, the main hi-hat, a splash cymbal, uh, China, and my trigger module. So there's a lot of stuff happening on this one little rack.